Hi everyone. Hope everyone, including your families, is uh, safe and healthy. Today I'm going to be talking about the armamentarium, which is commonly used in the Ripley. These uh, instruments are specific and, and unique because they allow you to perform treatments inside the pulp space. So obviously they're going to be very small in size. Uh, okay, so uh, in the early 1960s, uh, the two major uh, organizations, that is the International Organization for Standardization, that is the ISO, and the Federation Dentaire International, the FDI, they grouped the root canal instruments according to their method of use. So uh, they were either grouped based on their, uh, whether they can be used only by hand or whether they're going to be used with the help of engines. Uh, the hand use only, the most common examples uh, and the ones which you are going to be using the most are the files, that is the K files and the H files, followed by the reamers, brooches, pluggers and spreaders. The engine driven latch type this is a category which has the design exactly similar, exactly like uh, those possessed by the group one, uh, but uh, they can be attached to a handpiece. This is not very common right now. Uh, the group three, of course, is very common. Uh, these are your rotary instruments, uh, which uh, which do require an engine type. So along with the rotary, you also have your gate sclidin and the piezo reamers. The gate sclidin are used to enlarge your canal orifices and the piezo reamers are used to prepare the post space so that you can be performing something known as a post and core, which will be discussed in the later chapters. Uh, the group four are the root canal points. So the most common examples are the gutta percha and the paper points. The gutta percha is the most commonly used uh, root canal obturating material in conjunction with a root canal sealer. Please remember, gutta percha can never be used alone. It has to be used in conjunction with your root canal sealer. The paper points are used to dry the canals just before the obturation. They are also used to as an indicator to check whether there is any discharge present within the root canal. So, uh, if there is uh, the presence of any fluid or exudate or pus. Uh, it can be seeped up by the paper point and can be examined. Yes, it can also be sent for a culture. The silver point at one point of time used to be the most common obturating material, but because of the difficulty of removing and more importantly, the, the problematic uh, corrosion property of silver, uh, it is no longer used and is now being discarded as an obturating material. It has been substituted by our gutta percha and root. compared to your 2% taper which is seen in your K files.
Okay. Now, coming to the most commonly used hand, the first is the brooch. Brooches are the instruments which are most commonly used to extirpate or to remove the pulp. Okay, so you know, I'm sure you all know what pulp is. It is the soft tissue present within the hard tissues of the tooth that is encased within the enamel and the dentine. And the pulp is composed of the blood vessels and the nerve vessels and which is responsible for the vitality of the tooth. So when you are doing the root canal treatment, the pulp, which is gelatinous in nature, has to be extirpated from the pulp space. Yes. So these brooches, they kind of uh, resemble your barbed wire, which are uh, done as fencing, especially in those areas where there are a lot of stray animals so that the owners don't have the problem of stray animals entering into their land and eating all the vegetation they generally apply this barbed fencing all over so this barbed brooch kind of looks like that of course it is very small this is the magnified image so what happens is the pulp gets entangled within uh, these barbed brooches and it can be pulled out please remember the barbed brooches are not used for cleaning and shaping they are used specifically for extirpation of the pulp tissues also can be used for the removal of the cotton pellets or paper points which are placed inside the canal. Generally, we place cotton pellets inside the root canal after we have, uh, when we want to give a closed dressing. So now, inter-appointment, that means during the appointments, the, let us assume that you started off with the endodontic treatment on one day and you would like to send the patient after working on the tooth for say, uh, up till your cleaning and shaping so you would like to perform the obturation in the next visit so you cannot send the patient without closing that particular tooth you operated on so you have to give an inter intracanal medicament that is the most commonly uh, used is calcium hydroxide which will be discussed in subsequent classes followed by a cotton pellet so that the pulp space is blocked so that your Coming to the reamers, uh, the reamers are very very similar to your K files, the K files I will be discussing next. The, the use of the reamer is limited because uh, generally what we use right now for cleaning and shaping is your K files. 
the the advantage of the reamer is that it has lesser number of flutes so the flute is the space between the working ends of the file yeah so this will be known as the flute so it has lesser number of flutes when compared to the k files because of which the amount of debris it can carry is much more because the flute space is larger the k files have more number of flutes so it has lesser length of the flute yeah so because of which it can be used the reamers can be used to actually deposit your intracanal medicament which i mentioned before yes but uh, nowadays we prefer the k files much more used uh, for cleaning and shaping they are that is from size 30 onwards they are not very flexible and they tend to be a little more brittle so when you So what happens is just before separation you will see that there is going to be a kink or a sharp bend or these would have unwound so it would have become relatively straight that is the time you have.
basically file and not use again because the next first slide yeah okay so the disadvantage of the rotary files is that they do not have any signs of fatigue before they fracture because of which uh, if an inexperienced operator is using uh, rotary files for the first time and he or she is over enthusiastic and tries to increase the speed or tries to force the file into the canal uh, they will inadvertently separate the file in the canal so you have to take it easy yeah and uh, yeah okay so now coming to the advantages they possess shape memory so even if the canal is extremely curved 
it will not come out as a bent file when uh, when compared to the k files the k files because they are brittle they they will come they will take try to take the shape of the canal and they will have some sort of curvature when you remove it from the canal but the nitai files they will still appear as straight as ever yeah uh, they are super elastic so they are very very flexible they have good resilience and they are corrosion resistant so even though the files are extremely curved they do possess some amount of resilience to fracture because of their super elasticity Okay, so these are some steps which can be taken to prevent the separation or breakage of the instruments when using inside the root canals. The first being that uh, they have to be used only by torque controlled electric hand pieces. So please remember that although they are latch type files and they can be connected to your contra angle hand piece you can only control the speed from the contra angle you cannot uh, manipulate the torque the torque is the amount of twisting and flexing forces which will uh, which will be encountered by the file inside the root canal so that can be controlled by the endodontic motor so please use these files only with the endodontic motor and not with your uh, contra angle handpiece uh, micro motor okay please remember the second point is extremely important there is absolutely no substitute for your hand k files you have to create a proper glide path for these rotary files to follow to reach the working length you cannot use the rotary files from the beginning to the end you have to create a path for these files in the root canal which is created only and only by your k files now there are certain methods by which you can do the cleaning and shaping that will be discussed in the later classes so please remember that your rotary files use the crown down method for cleaning and shaping whether you use rotary files or whether you use your hand files please remember you have to clean the file as soon as you remove it from the root canal so uh, let us assume you placed uh, a rotary file or a hand k file into the canal you did your watch winding motion and then you remove it as soon as you remove it please remember you have to wipe the file with a cotton gauze piece and you have to examine the file for any kinks bends or unwinding before you reintroduce it into the canal by this method and this method alone will you be able to reduce the chances of mishaps from occurring inside the root canal space okay never ever force the file apically against resistance this is easier said than done because when you are a newbie and when you have less experience you will tend to get frustrated uh, yeah that covers the seventh point so for lubrication you can use edta that is 17% uh, of ethylene diamine tetra uh, acetic acid uh that will be discussed under uh, your uh, future chapters and irrigation uh, there are a lot of uh, popular root canal irrigants the most common ones being sodium hypochlorite uh, chlorhexidine and normal saline okay so these help to reduce the friction between the instrument and the dentinal walls and they help to flush out the debris which is present in the root canal so please make sure that whenever a file comes out from the root canal you then yeah these are the various motions by which the files can be used so you can have the brushing motion wherein the file is actually brushed or moved laterally and uh, across all the walls of the canal you have the up and down filing motion 
So you just basically move the file in an up and down manner till you reach the desired working length. And uh, the third motion is you take the file passively till it meets any resistance. So basically you allow the file to enter till you feel some sort of pressure from the root canal. The length of these file handles used to be 15 mm. So they have now been reduced to 12.5 mm so that you can use them easier in the posterior. because limited
mouth Now, like I said, uh, uh, there were three shaping files. Uh, SX which has absolutely no identification ring. However, the SX is the shortest uh, file in the Okay, so like I mentioned before, the F1, F2 and the F3, because they are finishing files, they come with their corresponding, are so thin, you can actually introduce them into the root canal uh, up till the... file has been separated and because of the vibration the the broken file segment becomes loose and it it can then be removed from the root canal uh, from the root canal Yeah? Okay. So now there are two mechanisms of action by which the ultrasonics work. This is in terms of the irrigation capabilities. Yeah? So how to act also I'll just give you a brief outline. Basically cavitation is the process by which energy is released when the small bubbles are formed in the liquid and when these bubbles implode. So basically when you are irrigating into the, uh, into the root canal, there will be the presence of small, small bubbles. Yeah, this is air canal. Acoustic streaming again makes use of the ultrasonics in which small intense currents uh, are created. These are also known as eddy currents. This, these currents are uh, propagated in the canal when the irrigant is already present in the canal. So after you irrigate in uh, using your syringe and needle and you place the irrigant into the canal, you introduce the ultrasonic tip and you start the action, the tuck in the canal. Yeah. So these are the basic uses of 
and uh, you can use it for the placement of MTA. So MTA is mineral trioxide aggregate. You will be taught about this in your uh, endodontic surgeries chapter. So basically you want to place a retrograde filling material. So this MTA can be placed with the help of uh, ultrasonics. Yeah. And like I said, uh, you can use the, endo, uh, the ultrasonics to dislodge uh, your separated file. It can also be used to remove the post. So like if you remember, I said that the piezo reamers are used to prepare the post space so that a post and core can be introduced into the canal. So if this is the post, the post has to be looted. I hope you understand what is looted. It means it has to be cemented into the canal. So in case if you want to remove this at some future point of time, you have to introduce the ultrasonic uh, handpiece into this junction between the root canal wall and the post and start the vibration. The vibration will cause the cracks in the cementing medium and it will help to dislodge the post from the root canal. Okay. Now coming to the spreaders and pluggers. have it either as the hand spreader this is not very common because inadvertently you tend uh, finger spreaders you uh, fabricated using as much as to your hand plug. Yeah, uh, these are the lentilo spirals. Uh, they are used uh, when you would like to introduce your root canal sealer or intra canal medicament into the canal. Uh, basically, they are attached to your micro motor handpiece and they are introduced into the canal and started. So they kind of spill or they fling the root canal sealer all along the walls of the canal. So you can use it either for the root canal sealer or you can use it for your uh, intracanal medicament to coat the walls of your root canal with either your root canal sealer or your uh, intracanal. medicament okay so that's about it from my side if you have any queries you can feel free you can uh, feel free to post uh, anything uh, just under the lecture in the comment section and i will definitely be there to help you and to get back to you okay